Aloha, Michelle with Blossom Inner Wellness, and I'm here with Tina Leah. And I'm this this talk, this video, this interview. If you are watching this and you live on the Hawaii Islands, or you want to come and visit any time in your lifetime, you're going to want to know about what is happening right now on Maui um, that they're trying to put through. They want to uh, put through these uh, injected mosquitoes. Now, these they, let me just put it to you this way. They have a, um, a document set up to release 300 million plus mosquitoes per week. They want to do this per week. That means over 40 billion mosquitoes released in, this, in Hawaii Island, I'm, I'm sorry, Maui Island, then Kauai, then throughout the whole island. They also are talking about creating a uh, bio lab for these mosquitoes. And we're gonna be talking all about this today. We're gonna be talking about the native Hawaiians. Uh, some of them were able to post concerns about what their concerns are and how they are just pretty much being ignored, their concerns. Uh, we're gonna talk about what the federal government wants to, their, their, their goal and their vision of what they want to um, do with these mosquitoes and these birds, because this is all under the guise of mosquitoes, not birds. Let's protect our native uh, birds because these birds are getting killed by malaria from these mosquitoes. And that's what this is about. They're trying to say that these precious birds are gonna be saved when we're even gonna talk about, they don't even know if this works long-term. There's, we're gonna talk about the fact that there is no agenda to uh, have an end to this. This is going to supposedly keep going over and going, going, going. And we're, we're, we have a lot to talk about, but let me just introduce my guest, Tina Leah. Um, you can feel my concern and my hype and my, my passion about this, but this woman, she has been studying a 250 page environmental assessment put out by Maui at the beginning of this month of December. And we have 45, 40, was it 45 or 43 days to in order uh, for us to make comments on this uh, 250 page the, uh, EA that she has literally used her highlighter, posted little notes, um, really done a superb job of understanding what is going on. And Tina, I just am so grateful to be interviewing you today on this matter, the subject. Thank you so much. And I'm so grateful to you for alerting the public to this months ago. If you hadn't had that network and been on top of things the way that you are and let everybody know that this was even happening, I don't know that we would be where we're at right now with the momentum and the public becoming aware of it because it was just from finding out about that and starting to look into it and making connections and through testimony and everything else that we've built up to where we are now, where I think we really are at a place where the public's going to really become aware of this and become as concerned as we are. And the more information we share, the better. And it's funny that you called it mosquitoes, not birds, because <laughs> it's actually birds, not mosquitoes, but I'm not so sure after reading some of this stuff. So yeah. So thank yeah, you well, for actually... having me. Yes, I've actually posted on their site because they have a Facebook that says birds, not mosquitoes. And I put on there, it's mosquitoes, friends. It's not about the birds, it's about the mosquitoes. <laughs> I actually had somebody write me a private message on Facebook uh, that said, thank you so much for posting. This was, a, this was a person that's not on my Facebook. She just saw publicly what I've been posting. And she said that she was actually bitten by mosquitoes that were released. And we, we can't say the G word who is behind this, but uh, she said she was bitten by these released mosquitoes. And, 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 and on, on her part, we don't know if they're the exact type of mosquito that's gonna be released in Maui, but she was bitten by mosquitoes that were released um, on her state. And she had to go to the emergency room because she was getting, um, she had anaphylactic shock three times. And now wow. she has what's called Skeeter syndrome. And she has to have an EpiPen with her for the rest of her life. And so I'm going to be interviewing her uh, hopefully very soon uh, because we, to, we, we need to be submitting these comments. There's two deadlines. The first deadline is with the um, 
uh, the federal uh, um, I, in um, EA it's or the emergency like exemption application for the biopesticide for the mosquitoes through the EPA. Thank you. So yeah. that one, we can make comments and that deadline is December 30th. That's, uh, you know, uh, like less than a, less than 10 days away from now. So if you're watching this and you're just like, okay, I just want to make a comment, Michelle, look at the links below. You'll have a look, at, um, look in the description. I'm going to post the link and I'm going to post what you can say. You can just copy and paste it. You can change the words and however you want to, but I'm going to give you exact links that you can look up so you can research this yourself and just go, oh my gosh, this is going to change everything uh, with, our, with our world and especially with these islands. And these islands happen to be in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. What a great environment for a Petri dish just to make these crazy experiments. And then if anything goes wrong, at least they know that, that you know it can't get out to the mainland. But we're not a Petri dish. This is the Hawaii Islands. So I want to start by talking about the native Hawaiians had some concerns about this that were pretty much just disregarded. And what were these concerns that these native Hawaiians had and have? Yeah, there were numerous concerns. So in the uh, environmental assessment, there was a section addressing um, you know, the cultural impacts and specifically interviewing seven uh, different Native Hawaiian lineal descendants and um, cultural experts and asking them their thoughts on the project. And all of them expressed concerns, you know, in addition to being hopeful that this would save the birds, um, just to make that clear, but they did all express different concerns, some similar concerns. And a lot of that had to do with cultural practices and how this might affect the Aina and the birds, which of course are, you know, highly revered, um, connected to the ancestral, you know, spiritual connection of the islands and everything. Um, and, you know, of course the Native Hawaiians understand how everything is interconnected. So there were concerns about how one thing might affect another in the environment and how this could even affect other islands through the waterways, how it could affect the water, how it could affect different, you know, creatures in the water, the wildlife, um, multiple, multiple concerns that were very valid and some that even could be connected to some of the concerns that the state admitted to in the environmental assessment and their mitigation measures. So I do think um, we need a lot more eyes on this from the Native Hawaiian community and voices from the Native Hawaiian community. I would love to see them take some leadership on speaking out about this. And even if they have opinions that there might be reasons to do it or different opinions about ways that this could be um, dealt with um, that we haven't thought of or focused on, we need to hear those voices. I, you know, it's really disturbing to see the way the state is presenting this as something honoring uh, the Native Hawaiians and then just repeatedly over and over again in that document, they're not honoring them. They are not listening to their concerns. They're using this, you know, I, I don't want to say appropriating because people don't like that word, but that is what they're doing. They're, they're trying to tug at the heartstrings. We all care yeah. about the birds. Um, we obviously want to save the birds. We get it. Um, but it's it's just so backwards when you see the way that they're answering to these concerns or other concerns that obviously tie into um, the, the Native Hawaiian culture. And so, yeah, I would yeah, love to do I'll, more reaching out there. Also um, with this, because, you know, this is supposedly about the birds, even though I believe I, I saw your last interview and it, you said that there was somewhere in the federal document that said they're not even sure if this is going to work. Uh, That's and I right. Don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know the exact. Do you remember what, um, what that was? Let me grab that for you. I think I even have that up here somewhere, the exact wording of it, if I can find it. So they're um, going to put out over 300 million plus, it's like 300 million to 700 million per week, over 40 billion mosquitoes. They want to take uh, helicopters and drones. They want to use these biodegradable packages that are supposedly going to hit the Aina, hit the land, then open up. Then they sit there and hopefully biodegrade in a certain amount of time. And we don't even know what, what those packages do to the land or to possible you know, insects or other um, birds that might be eating the packages. Uh, and so, but, and they're not even sure if this is going to work. And there's no end. 
they don't have okay we're going to do this for a year and, and then we'll see how this how this works for the birds they don't have an ending in sight so they're just going to keep doing this over and over again uh costing um millions billions of dollars of whose money guess who and um <laughs> They don't even know if this is going to work. So uh, let's see. I think I can make you host and you can um, share your screen on this oh, okay. one. Yeah, let's see great. here. Let me... Yeah, let's see here if I uh, make host. Okay. So what okay. I there we the go. Screen. Oh, oh, I can't see what's happening now because I've got the thing in front of my <laughs> so I should share screen. Yeah, share screen if you got that up. But I just want to show where this says in this document that they're not even sure if this is going to work. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Is that, are we, uh... So again, if you're watching, you can comment, look in the description below and uh, the links are there. And if you're not sure what to write, I'm, I've written out comments that you can copy and paste, change it however you'd like. Go for it, Tina. Okay. Is that share screen working right now? It is. I see it. Yes. Okay, great. So this is in that federal document from the Department of Interior. Um, this connects to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, which is one of the partners in the multi-agency partnership called Birds Not Mosquitoes. Um, so this is the federal documentation of where this plan is going. Um, and when you say that they're telling us there doesn't seem to be an end, not only is there no end, this is going in a very specific direction, and we can look at that too, but this is what you're talking about. Specifically, they say risk yeah. management is and will continue to be an integral component during implementation of this strategy. For example, although used worldwide for human health, Wabakia IIT, that's the insect incompatibility technique, and they're now calling it um, insect incompatibility. It was previously incompatible yeah. insect technique. We can look at that. Wabakia IIT is a novel tool for conservation purposes and its degree of efficacy in remote forest landscapes is unknown. So, yes. Unknown, everybody. Us, yeah, they don't know. Yeah. They, they've tried it on humans and they've got some studies on that. Um, but as far as what's happening here, unknown, they're telling us. We are experimenting on your islands. That's what we're doing. And we don't know, and, and and we don't know if it's going to work. So you can, uh, so you can yeah. un, unscreen, unshare that. Okay. Um, but yeah, we're we're not. So here, here's the thing: we want to save these birds. We're going to do this. We're going to release millions, bill, billions of these mosquitoes injected with a Wolbachium bacteria. Let's talk about the mosquito a little bit. This this bacteria, um, they're what they're doing is they're manually and using AI, artificial intelligence to separate the male and female mosquitoes. They're injecting the male mosquitoes with this Wolbachium bacteria. Then they're releasing the male mosquitoes and male mosquitoes don't bite humans. They bite, um, they feed off nectar and, and female mosquitoes bite humans uh, and, and birds. And so they're, they're saying that it's a, oh, it's a male. Then when the Department of Agriculture did their video on this, the guy said, oh, it's, it's a million chance that a female is gonna get out. Okay, what uh, what uh, scientific experiment always goes right? Uh, let's see here, zero. Like the, they did this, they did this experiment in Singapore. Three females got out. They had to, I, I think the word is erad eradicate all of them in the area because they actually had a plan in place. If something goes wrong, this is what we're going to do. Hawaii has no plan in place. If something goes wrong, they don't have a plan. That, that helps to stop that, to, to help to, I like the word, to mitigate these issues. They have ideas, oh, we can do this, this, and this to mitigate these issues, but there's actually zero plan in place if a female gets out. They, these females, um, they can, um, they, 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 there's actually proof that they enhance different, different viruses. Um, I believe it's West Nile and malaria. Um, do you, have you, have you heard of that, uh, Tina, around those? Um, yeah, I looked at the study. It's I, I think it is with one of the Culex uh, mosquitoes, not the specific one that they're okay. bringing in here, but the study um, was showing that um, because of the Wolbachia bacteria, um, it was allowing for an increase in pathogen infection and it could cause them to be more capable of transmitting 
things like West Nile virus, and that specific study was specific to that. And West Nile virus is something that can be transmitted to birds and humans, and we don't have it on the islands yet, but it could become established by uh, some something like this, a project like this. And so, yeah, that's... <laughs> That's really a big deal. That's that's big not deal. you know Huge. something to not even address at all, which they haven't addressed that at all as you know one of the concerns. So, and also these females, if they start, if they get out and start breeding, there's been shown of gene a horizontal gene transfer where they can actually create a whole different type of mosquito. Where they is that? I, that's what I was um, uh, reading about at one point. Yeah, that has to do with. Um, causing bacteria resistance um, changes and um, yeah, uh, additional evolution and pathogen infection, um, bacteria resistance, um, mm -hmm. pathogen evolutions, I believe was, I, I, <laughs> so now I have my screen up, normally I have my screen and I'm like, boom, 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 but um, yeah. So, so many things, so many things can go wrong. So many. And that's just with the, um, I don't know where they're getting their statistics that how many female mosquitoes might get out, but the female mosquitoes are getting out per the studies. And um, that can cause a lot of things to happen, like, you know, the breeding, like you said, and it can cause the whole population to be taken over by the lab reared form of the mosquitoes. And we don't know how, yeah, they, the, yeah, how disease and, you know, what, how the behavior is going to be affected, um, how it's going to infect different organisms, different um, insects, different animals, the birds, so many things. And that's just if they escape. And the reality is that doesn't even have to happen for this all to happen because there's something called horizontal transmission, which if you want to get into, that's basically a situation where they might be creating the females here. Um, by introducing that bacterial strain. And so we're in the same situation as if they had missorted. Yeah. Yeah. And so the last thing I want to say on this, on this topic, and then I want to get into um, what the federal government um, sees for the future and how Google uh, is possibly involved in this and these labs that they want to create here on the islands. Um, but the last thing I want to say, and, and I maybe I've already said this, is that again, these, they want to inject these male mosquitoes so that they are not compatible with the female and then they actually make the female sterile. So this bacteria, uh, this Wolbachia bacteria, if, if a female gets out and she's got this bacteria that sterilizes her eggs, you know, and then she's able to bite you know, people, what is the effect on a person? You know, does that then affect a female's eggs for reproduction or a male's sperm for, for reproduction? You know, what, where's the proof that, that humans are safe and that the, our reproduction is not going to be um, uh, in, in trouble by having these, um, these certain type of bacteria mosquitoes? Uh, do you know anything about that um, at all as far as science goes? Has, have there been any experiments on that? Um, not to my understanding, and I think um, probably because this technology is more geared towards the incompatible strain of the bacteria causing the eggs not to be viable, that it's more specific to the mosquitoes, but that doesn't change the fact that we don't know how um, things evolving and, and path increased pathogen and, of course, where they're going with all of this um, I don't think so we, it's out there at all to be concerned about human sterility. I don't know if I could say in relation to this technology that they're em employing, but um, it's so we don't definitely know. on the radar. <laughs> it's on the Based radar. On, we're yeah, sure. what we're looking. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Cool. So, um, yes. Uh, okay. Again, one more time, and not one more time, but comment, comment, comment. The links are in the description. And what would I want to talk about now is the uh, the future. The future of the islands, okay? <laughs> we have 40 billion uh, mosquitoes they want to release on Maui to start with, then Kauai, then the rest of the islands with no end in sight. They don't even know if this is going to work and they don't have any ideas of how this is going to affect the birds, if it's even going to save the birds or make things worse. So uh, let's talk about the future. What is the future? What are they seeing as their future goals? I think it was 2032. They want to have a bio lab here. They so talk to us about what the, what they say their future is for these islands on this topic. 
Yeah, so in the environmental assessment, I just came across something that was kind of in there in passing. Um, it wasn't real obvious, but it stood out to me where it said that they, you know, might be able to expedite things or however it was worded by having labs uh, here in Hawaii or having a lab in Hawaii. Um, and so then we've come across these federal documents that we were just referencing. And then it becomes really clear what they're talking about. And this is sort of probably what um, we had an inkling of when we saw this project is this is not just about mosquitoes with a little bit of perfectly safe bacteria that we already have on the island and you know, put aside everything else we just said, which is horrifying and needs to be looked at and has not been. <laughs> Um, they are fully planning on moving this into a direction of labs here where they're looking at synthetic biology, um, gene drives, uh, CRISPR technology for the mosquitoes, and CRISPR-Cas9 technology for the birds. They're talking so you're about... Um, yes, go ahead. So, you're well, well, just to make it clear... Um, the the CRISPR Cas9 technology was referenced in the Maui environmental assessment as one of the alternatives that they looked at and dismissed, but that was because they're not there yet with the technology. But this federal document is very clearly alluding to that and talking about doing um, you know, uh, genetic, I don't know if it's such I have to look at it specifically, but it's saying ways that we can make the birds more resistant to malaria um, and it clearly ties into them telling us that they are going to be looking at genetically modifying the birds and i actually i would like to find that wording so that everyone knows i'm not <laughs> making that up let me see if i can find that for you yeah yeah go, show yeah, it go ahead necessarily and, but, yeah find that um, and whenever you're ready find that whenever you're ready do a screen share on that so um this CRISPR technology is so basically they're wanting to modify the birds through the mosquitoes um, so that the birds are more are more resistant to malaria. And so this is like, there's so many things wrong with that. Um, uh, and and for, for me, I mean, I just want to say, how dare they? How dare they act like God to, to change um, a, a, a sentient being that was created by the creator, you know, and for them to actually inject them create these mosquitoes inject them with a certain bacterium that's going to then be injected into birds and humans if this mosquito if the female gets out and now they're trying to play god um you know, wanting to modify the birds so that they don't have malaria so that they can stay alive really is that going to happen like Anyway, go ahead, Tina. Do you find did you find it? Yeah, I did find it. And actually, I don't even know that uh, that they're talking about, although maybe that's part of it too, um, using the mosquitoes to modify the birds, but that knowing them, who knows, but they are talking about directly modifying the birds, playing with the birds. I don't, you know, probably wouldn't be like literally having the bird there <laughs> laying there dead in the lab, but who knows? Um, yeah, anyway, so the first part, let me see if I can... Share oh, what here. page is that? Do you have a share? Yeah, screen share and then share the page so people can find this on their own. We're going to yeah. also leave a link to this, these documents these two people can uh, find. Right. So is that showing? Is the screen showing? Yes, we have. So it. this we is page seven of the that federal document, the Fish and Wildlife Department of the Interior document. And it says, uh, you know, in the context also of synthetic biology, improving genetics, um, in vitro and in vivo tool trials. And then it says field trials of methods for improving malaria resistance in birds, 2023 to 2026, so very soon. And that might look, um, you know, innocent enough because we don't know what that means, but we do know what that means because remember this terminology, methods for improving malaria resistance in the birds. So then we go to the this is the um, environmental assessment for Maui. I'm on page 117 of the PDF document. And these are the alternatives that they have dismissed for now. And one of them is genetic modification of forest birds. And the way they open that up is under this scenario, forest bird genetic information will be modified to promote resistance to malarial infection. So we're clearly talking about the same thing. And they're telling us here the practice of gene editing with CRISPR-Cas9 technology has been applied to domestic animals. So, and then they go on to talk about that. And they basically conclude by saying that this technology 
or this approach is not available for near term implementation. But, you know, I firmly believe based on all of this information and how the, the terminology and the long term plan clearly ties together is that they want to have labs here in Hawaii or at least one lab. Uh, and they want to be doing research on genetically modifying the birds using CRISPR-Cas9, which um, if anybody is uh, highly familiar with that, we could use some scientific input on that. But I know just from uh, hearing about what that's about over the last couple of years that it's very concerning in the context of the bigger agenda uh, globally and of the... Um, push towards changing the genetics of life, all life. And um, it can also tie into the biotechnology aspect of what the agenda is, which is to have this internet of bodies and internet of things and everything is somehow digitized, including, including life, birds, you know, humans. Um, it all ties together. It may sound a little out there for someone who hasn't mm -hmm. been looking at any of this, but for you and I, Michelle, we know what we're looking at right now and people need yeah. to get on alert. This is so yeah. concerning. And, you know, you, and you can speak on the fact that them um, pushing this as honoring the evolution and the ancestral connection to the birds and the spirituality of these birds and talking about modifying them and turning them into something else and you know it's not acceptable that they're even talking this way in that context if they want to talk this way don't wrap it up in you know in a pretty bow about caring about the ancestral connection be real you know yep oh yes sister that's you yeah you're speaking my language uh go ahead and unshare that and then yeah. i want to talk um i want to finish off with um now, how is Google involved with this? Because you, 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 there's something in the federal paper document that you have that says Google, a, a subsidiary of Google, that's the lab. Yeah. That, so, that's okay. One of the labs that, um, I don't think they actually have mentioned the labs again in the environmental assessment, but when we were going through that process through the DLNR and the um, Board of Agriculture and uh, some of the um, board meetings they were having and testimony and the um, documentation they were putting out was showing, and this has to do with the applications for um, things that were going to be on the agenda um, to get approved, uh, that the two labs that they would be importing the mosquitoes from, these lab-reared Wolbachia infected biopesticide mosquitoes, are uh, Verily Life Sciences, and the other one was called Mosquito Mate. And it turns out that this Verily Life Sciences is, is a subsidiary of Google. It's listed in that federal document, um, just clear as day. I was <laughs> kind of, you know, meaning to look into what might have been some of the financial backing, the history background of the, the those two labs, and I hadn't had time to do it. And there it just came right across um, yeah, a Verily Life Same Sciences, thing, yeah. comma, a subsidiary of Google. It's in there. It's in that, it's 20 page document. I could probably tell you what page it's on if you want me to look. No, um, no, that's all good. Uh, you yeah. guys, it's, it's in the documents in the, did you see that it's 260 pages and, uh, Tina has really uh, been going through this with, um, a very keen eye and we just so, so appreciate you. Uh, you guys, if you're watching this, if you're still with us, please, if you haven't yet, this is the time to speak up. This is the time right now, because once this gets out, if anything goes wrong, they don't, they don't have a plan to fix it. They, they, if these females get out and start breeding, creating new mosquitoes, uh, we don't know what that's gonna do to people and to the birds they wanna save. And um, so please comment, uh, the first one federal is due. The federal uh, one that we want you to comment on is because they wanna be exempt they want to be exempt from doing a full, I think it's called full spectrum environmental assessment. Is that right? What is um, the right terminology? We're ta are you talking about the EPA portion or the environmental? Yeah, what is the exemption? The, the federal, um, they want to. So the, fa the EPA one is an exemption for um, usage of the biopesticide without having had it go, go through the EPA um, approval so, process. So they're, they're asking for an emergency 
exemption to use these mosquitoes as a biopesticide through the EPA. Um, but the, the Maui environmental assessment, yes, it's a way to avoid doing an environmental impact statement, which is what they need exactly. to do. And so that's what we need to push for on that. And, and, you know, you can use the same wording on both documents and make it easier, but one is really more focused on the, the product, <laughs> the mosquitoes, the product, and the other one is focused on the effects that it's going to have on the environment and the fact that they have not addressed those and have the nerve to present this literally saying, you know, that they are not finding that it's going to have um, an impact on the environment. Um, we all know that that is beyond outrageous and <laughs> we need them to um, stop lying to the people and show us. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Show us the proof. Show us the proof is that it's not going to harm uh, the aina, the land, the people, the birds. I, I remember that one of the concerns with the Hawaiian natives was talking about the nene, you know, how, how is this going to affect the nene and their um, uh, uh, that, uh, that bird and their reproduction and, and all of that. But, um, so they, these people are wanting to get out. They're saying, oh, this is an emergency, even though this has been going on for how long. And what blows my mind too, they have other things they can be doing that are way safer for right. the birds that aren't going to harm people. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I came across a few of the things that they have been doing, and I'm still looking into that to see how um, when they presented in the environmental assessment that the only two alternatives, and this is how they present it, you know, these other alternatives like the genetically modified birds are way back in this index of things that we looked at and rejected and are not even going to talk about in the main part of this. And federal law allows us to do that, which is true. I looked it up. Um, so yeah, they give two alternatives, do this project or don't do anything, but they actually are doing things, um, including cleaning up the landscape and um, dealing with the, what they call the ungulates, which are the um, hoofed mammals, like the pigs and the deer, wild boar that kind of tear things up and cause standing water in a, an environment where mosquitoes can breed. And they do um, captive care where they take the birds into you know, like a aviary sanctuary situation and, and breed them and make sure that they're thriving and that they have numbers of birds and then they'll re-release them. And they also transport the birds um, from one area to another. So could be from one island to another, could be, you know, I, I would think in the same area um, on an island to a better area. I don't know if that would work because they probably <laughs> slide back, but sometimes they transport them to the mainland or they talk about transporting them to the mainland and people don't like that. So um, if there is a focus on what we could do here, I would want to say, um, first of all, there's 14 million plus um, budgeted for this project right now for this initial part of the project. And I think there is some information in there about them talking about some of you know, the things that captive care and, and whatnot. I have to go into detail to see. Um, but clearly that's not um, the bulk of the focus. And I want to say, why isn't that the bulk of the focus? Why are we doing this experiment, this highly costly, risky experiment um, why not focus on making sure we have adequate captive care facilities that are staffed, um, looking at transportation, you know, tra transporting them to another island. So at least they're within the islands and we could talk to the Native Hawaiians about how they feel about that, but at least um, cleaning up the area, um, you know, I don't know, there's probably other um, there's multiple things you can do for mosquito eradication from what I've looked at. I don't want to start presenting things without being someone that has the background to say what works better, what's more safe um, as far as that goes. But there are things they can do that have nothing to do with chemicals or biological agents or, you know, so what about a focus on that and bringing in um, Native Hawaiian uh, outlook on how we deal with the environment and, and what's best for the birds. So yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. So there's so there's other there's other methods that sound like they have provenly work. I mean, breeding birds and then releasing that actually works. They're wanting to do this million dollar experiment without an end in sight, not even knowing that if it's uh, you know it's unknown if it even is going to work, and um, and the possible risk to humanity, humans on the island, the land, the other birds is hum is humongous, tons and tons of risk. So I say no. I've already submitted my comments. I'm sure you've already submitted your comments. If you guys are watching still, submit your comments, share this video. 
Um, and, and please, if you're a native Hawaiian, please get in touch with Tina. What's your, what's your website? I'm going to put the link in the description as well. Yeah, it's hawaiiunites.org and all of this information is on there. We've got articles with documentation. We've got peer-reviewed studies on the science and um, pages where you can see all the risks that they've admitted to, which we didn't even look at. <laughs> so many things can happen. Wildfires. Yeah. And, I mean, it's just, and anyway, and, and we have maps and tables and things that I've kind of simplified so you don't have to sift through looking for the important stuff in the document. You can just see right off the bat, where is this happening, which it's 64,666 acres on Maui. That's how we are getting the, um, it's actually um, 775,992,000 potential per week. So I think that's, you know, when, when you do the 300, you're maybe looking at the once a week, which they say could happen, you know, depending, but it could be up to twice a week. But if you look at the maps of the release areas, the bulk of it is um, the high release, which would probably be twice a week or, you know, more than, <laughs> more than once a week so, average for sure. So we're looking at millions, millions, millions. of these things a week. And is a female going to get through? Are they going to create female? I mean, yeah. So yeah. anyway, hawaiiunites.org. And you can also link to um, read these documents, the environmental assessment, the federal documents on there. And there's links to where you can testify on both the environmental assessment and the EPA exemption um, yeah. application. Yeah, I put those in the links below. Yeah. You, so you were saying, so I was saying 300 million, uh, 300 plus million per week, but you're saying they're going to do yeah. that twice. So that's close. I mean, that's like yeah. astronomical. Yeah, and, so and you're correct, also, but it might be way, it might be twice as bad. <laughs> twice we, as it's bad. somewhere in there. Yeah. It's somewhere in. I mean, we we really don't know because they say between fifty to six thousand, which is a pretty broad range of mosquitoes released per acre, um, up to twice a week. So I'm looking at it as what's the what's the potential here? Um, and either way, billions per, per year, billions, yeah. forty billion. You have uh, an estimated forty billion per year. And that's just on Maui. Then they go Kauai. Then they go all the other islands. Then they're creating a biolab. So you guys, we need to stop this. Uh, there's other things that, that can be done for these birds. And um, putting an injected mosquito with all of this risk for the people, for the aina, for our keiki, it's not, it's not okay with me. And Tina, I'm pretty sure it's not okay with you. Otherwise, you wouldn't have spent hours and hours researching a 250-page document, which was um, not, you know, there's diff definitely special people who, who can do that. But Let's do a prayer before we jump off. Um, HawaiiUnites.org. Please visit that site. Uh, I'm also going to put the link to the interview you did with Sam because if you want all these pages um, and, and see, watch Tina actually actually go through the whole entire, uh, well, not the whole entire 250 page document, but a really good portion of it that goes through what um, we just talked about, where to find it. And then you want to watch that video. It's about 45 minutes long, but let's go ahead and do a prayer right here. And just breathe into your body if we're watching this and in your present moment. And just notice the feeling that you're having in your body. And don't make it wrong. Don't make it right. Don't make it good or bad. It's just a frequency. This is a frequency that you're having in your body. Frequency I'm having in this present moment. And find within your body. You can put your hands on your heart. And find within your body that part of you that trusts in a higher power, this higher power that is beating your heart, that is beating, breathing your body, that is pumping a gallon of blood through your blood vessels, your veins, miles of veins throughout your body. Find within your body and inside of your heart, that part of you that trusts in this higher power that is moving the sun across the sky that's running the tides in the ocean, that's guiding the honeybees to their next flower, and guiding the whales on their migration path. And feel yourself sitting wherever you're sitting at in this, this beautiful planet. And just find the peace inside of your heart that knows that this higher power, this infinite intelligence, this source of love that has got our back, Feel into the trust in your heart and in your body right now. And let yourself, give yourself permission to find peace. 
Give yourself permission to find that part inside of you that knows you're always taken care of. To find that part inside of you that knows that this higher power is taking care of us and bringing light and ease and harmony to all people around the world. That this higher power is guiding all the people who need to say, this is not okay with me. For them to make a comment, to comment on these links that we have provided and finding these people that are looking at these comments, that they do what is right. They do what is good for the Aina and for all humanity that is on these islands, for all sentient beings, for all souls, for all keiki, for all future generations to come. That they do what is right in their heart and that they know is right with the Aina and with the source that is within them, the source of love, with, which is in every single cell of our bodies right now. And we give so much gratitude for the bravery of those who do what is right, not what is easy, but what they know to be right. And we just send them and we send ourselves so much appreciation for saying, yes, I'm going to go and forth and I'm going to go to live on the Hawaii Islands during my lifetime. And I'm going to step forth and I'm going to make a statement when I need to make a statement when I feel it is time. So we just give ourselves so much gratitude and appreciation. We give so much gratitude and appreciation to this Aina, to the land that we live on, this beautiful Hawaii Islands. These Hawaii, Hawaii Islands that support us in so many ways with our fruit and with the vegetables that's grown and with community, and with love, with laughter. We give so much gratitude to the connection that we have with the Aina, with Mother Earth, with each other. We know that our lives are always guided. We just trust in this guidance now. We just come back to this present moment, feeling ourselves in this space. I can feel the breeze on my back and on my arms. And if you're sitting inside, just feel that empty space, the, the frequency of peace that surrounds your body. Give yourself permission to trust in this peace, to trust in this amazing source of love that has moved the sun even a little further across the sky since when we started this prayer and this interview, still running the tides in the ocean and this infinite intelligence that is beating your heart and breathing your body and sending billions, creating billions of processes inside of your cells to keep you alive. It knows what to do. And it sends us intuition of what is ours to do. What is our kuleana? And right in this present moment, it's trusting and making comments, letting them know how we feel that this is not okay. And we hold in the light and love of infinite source, these birds, because this is all in a guise to protect these amazing native birds. So we now see the Hawaii Islands just having so many abundant, abundant native birds singing, flying around just absolutely in joy and in peace. The farm that I live on has, has bird nests sometimes in the trees. We just give so much gratitude to the beautiful native birds that are completely taken care of through the infinite source of love that has created them. And we are so grateful to all the people in their true heart of love that they love these birds. And we know that there's a better way. There's a better way than to create man-made injected mosquitoes. And we just trust that this infinite source has got this, has got this. We breathe into the courage that it takes to stand up and the courage that it takes to make comments. And we know that we've got this. 
We breathe into this amazing human body, knowing that every single step of the way is guided by infinite love. And coming back into this present moment, wiggling your toes and your fingers. And when you're ready, slowly open your eyes. So Tina, I just send you so much mahalo for your time. And I, I know you've spent hours and hours and hours looking through this document. And um, I, just, I just thank you so much for everything that you're doing. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for that prayer. I really could feel it. And um, we need more of that. <laughs> we need more spiritual connection um, and people getting in tune with each other and the environment and the birds and, you know, what life is really about, which is not um, turning everything into robots. <laughs> and yeah, it's... <laughs> and it's it's not about trusting in man. It's about trusting in God. It's going back to God and going, okay, let me think here. Who created this planet? Who created these birds? Who is beating my heart? I'm not plugged into a wall. I don't have batteries. Something's breathing my body. Something knew how to create fingers and toes and liver and all of it. So guess what? I'm going to trust. And then what happens is we're guided by inspiration, by intuition. And somebody who had an intuition to go, let's create a breeding, you know, av av I don't know what it's called, a, a bird place where they breed these native birds. Let's do that. Somebody thought of that. Somebody had an intuition to do that. Let's have more of that. Let's do more of what is right through God through trusting in this higher power and not this man-made injection stuff because there's so many things that go wrong with that and can go wrong and 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 I'm not trusting in that I trust in in guide uh, uh, this God that guides me every step of the way what is mine to do next and that's where we're at so we just trust in that and and what's great about this is the, the new community that I I get to meet amazing people like you from around the island and uh, more of that please and more of just finding our peace trusting in this higher power and watching as this higher power goes no this is not happening this is the direction we're going we're going to save the birds and we're going to do it the way god would do it and that is what i believe in more than anything so yes much aloha it. to you sister <laughs> thank um, you so all right, much everybody all right, everybody, please comment below, send those comments and go to hawaiiunites.org if you want to connect again more with Tina uh, and much aloha for the next time. Mahalo. Aloha. See if I can grab the recording. <laughs> oh, you're, you're the host. Like, oh, I, I am. Pause the recording. Oh my gosh, how did that happen? Okay, should I just end? I just, yeah, just, just end, the, okay. end, the, end the recording. Thank you so That's much, good. Michelle. That was sure. great. I appreciate it. Talk with it. you soon. Okay. Aloha. Aloha.